Welcome to another episode of Tech Geek Gamers. Thanks for tuning in. This week, Chris, myself, and Mark take you through how to play the simple version of Through the Ages. Through the Ages, a story of civilization, is a complex, complex game. Lucky for you and I, they've broken the rules out into a simple game, advanced game, and full game. Unlucky for Chris and me, though. Yeah. Yeah, just for yeah. you and the <laughs> You and me. <laughs> Today we're going to be going over the simple rules, uh, which basically introduces the player to the mechanics of the game so that you can enjoy future games. Certain aspects of the game we've discovered aren't really relevant to the simple game, like building wonders, changing your government. Military. Military. And military. Yeah. Some to military, but... Yeah. The game is broken down into rounds. Each player gets a turn within a round, uh, and then you go on to the next round. The first, second rounds are a little bit different, and then the third and after that are all the same. In, the, in a round, on a player's turn, a player will use four actions, or the number of actions depicted by their government. In the simple game, it's four. You will start with four act civil actions and two military actions. We probably won't really use our military actions at all. What you can do with those actions, you basically use the actions to get a new card, or play a new card, or build a new building, or resource kind of thing, or anything you want to do on your turn. In the first round, the first player can take a card for a total worth of one action, the second player can take cards worth of two actions, and the third player can take cards worth three actions. The card row is broken down into the first five cards, will cost one action to take one of those, the next four cards will take two actions to take one of those, and the last four will take three actions to take one of those. In a four-person game, the fourth person would get four actions. In the second round of the game, players will start playing the cards they picked up in the first round. Uh, typically, most players don't have enough resources to play anything. They've only earned a little bit at the end of the first turn. Um, so you'll build a new mine or you build a new farm. Okay? That'll be explained as we play. Yes. In the third round and beyond, we introduce events. At the start of each round, starting with the first player, only once, a new event will be introduced. The event will be something like, everybody gets two resources, or something to that effect, and it'll just impact the game for that specific round. The board, which looks very complicated, actually is broken down into four parts. The card row, your culture points, which go all the way around, all the way up to 190, your technology points, which go all the way to 40, and then your military, culture, and technology. I'm gonna call them indicators. In the rules, they just say it's your military, culture, and technology, but I'm gonna call them indicators. And they tell you on a turn-by-turn -turn basis what's kind of happening in the game. So your <coughs> technology points are your currency. You, on your cards, it'll tell you how many technology points you need to spend to use that card, plus with a civil or military action for that card. Your Military indicator is how strong you are at that current moment. Uh, we won't use that at all, so don't worry about that. Your culture indicator tells you how many points you accumulate at the end of your turn. Those points are transpired onto your culture point, scoreboard, which goes all the way around, and person with the most points wins the game. And then finally, your technology indicators is how much technology or money, as we like to call it, you earn at the end of your turn. These can be moved as you play cards. Setting up the board is very simple. You have your Ages cards. In simple games, you only use Age 1. Um, you have your Ages cards that you lay across your card row, and then all your player indicators, indicated by the color of your Civilization board, kind of go at zero on the board. All right, so each player gets their own respective Civilization board, uh, which represents your your... Your color, so I'm orange, Mark's green, purple, which are, as Corey mentioned, indicated on the playboard. So setup on here is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll explain the two different, or the four different colors real quick. So yellow is your workers, uh, which there's your population bank. Uh, then blue is your supply. And then up top here is, or sorry, your play piece is still white's your actions. Red is military actions, so civil and military. To set up, you, it's pretty easy. They make it really obvious. Place a play, uh, place a token on all the white ones. If it's colored in as blue and yellow, you're not putting anything there. So, all right, that's your setup. 
up top here you've got your four different technologies and your infantry, your warriors. So you've got your philosophy, which is your labs, religion, which is your building of your temples, agriculture, farm, and then bronze is mine. Uh, at the bottom, it indicates what you're actually producing. So mines and farm is your ores and your, your food, which you are then going to indicate with your blue pieces, how many you actually have. And then as you build your religions, you're going to start moving your tokens on the board there. So uh, the harp is your culture points and the smiley face uh, is happiness. just your happiness. Well, which doesn't... Is not used in the simple yeah, game. Yeah, not really used in simple games. You do earn points on it, but it takes a bigger role in the advanced and full versions. The cost to do or move a worker to those respective areas is indicated by the red number... Uh, uh, Red number beside the symbol of the ore. So to build a new mine, it costs two ores to to place that worker from your worker pool onto the bronze to create a new mine to produce more ore. But Chris, how do you create a new worker? To create a new worker, you from your population bank, uh, that's where food plays in. So to begin with, at the bottom there, it says it takes two food to take a person from your population bank and then to move them into the worker pool. As you build up a larger worker pool, the cost goes up uh, to as high as seven food to create a new worker from that worker pool. So at the end of each player's turn, <clears throat> all of your buildings that you've set out will produce what is required of them. You will then also feed your people. Um, based on the number of missing from your population bank, it will tell you how much food you need to consume. In the simple game we've discovered, I don't think you can starve your people. The amount of food you produce should be sufficient. Unless you did something really weird, you, you shouldn't be worried about right. it. Other than that, the game gives you a really, really nice card that takes you through all your actions that you can do on uh, your turn. On your player turn card, <laughs> the, if you look at the bottom, it will tell you all the different <clears throat> types of cards there are. Um, the, the most important is Action cards, which are the yellow cards, cannot be played immediately. All other cards can, but they use, an, obviously, a civil or a military action to do so. However, in the first round, you're not allowed to play cards at all. That's right. Mark has arbitrarily decided that I will be the first person to go, since I arbitrarily decided that he should have been the first person to go last time. I'm fairly certain that had nothing to do with nothing his decision. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I am going to, ooh, I am going to, yeah, use Efficient Upgrade, which is an action card, and, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my turn. I will use my two actions and take two one-cost action cards, get Leonardo da Vinci, which is a leader card, and Rich Land, which is an action card. Okay, so I've got three actions... I uh, don't really... Three of the three cost cards are pretty much useless in a simple game. Government, uh, the military. I don't really want to spend three on a leader, so I'm kind of stuck. You sure you don't want not Michelangelo? What? Oh, wow. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's take Michelangelo. So Michelangelo is a leader... That brings us to the end of the first round. We're just going to slide all the cards that were not selected down the path. On the uh, card row, they have a little two, three, and four person indicator. Mm -hmm. We're playing a three person game. So what you do is you, really, you eliminate the last two cards. They get garbage. We'll put garbage over there. Everything gets shuffled down. New cards get put in place. And now, starting on the second turn, we will do that at the end of everybody's turn. The game ends when when the cards are done. Actually, that's not true. The game ends when the last card is played and placed on the card row, not when the cards that's are right. done. We will finish that round, wherever we are in that round. So, uh, one thing we did forget to mention uh, is whether or not you produce resources at the end of your first turn, and I believe you do. I believe you do too, so everybody mm -hmm. has one. And everybody gets one. And then everybody also gets <clears throat> our food and our, our two food and oars. Two oars. Good catch, Mark. That's playing 
very socially accepted. Mm. <laughs> Never right. forget to produce and maintain. Yeah. So this is round two. We can start moving things. Uh, you have four actions. I do have four actions. I am going to... That's easy. I will uh, move this guy into my bronze mine and take my worker and build another mine. And then I will pay my two food to put another worker there. I think I will take... It's still worth it. Iron mine. Take the drama while you're at it. I think you had another action. Uh, or yes, a leader, do. perhaps. Uh, you know what? You're right. Uh, Corey will produce and maintain his people as I begin my turn. Uh, I will start with using an action to play Leonardo da Vinci. So my uh, Leonardo labs da Vinci. start producing more money, which is great. Um, and I have a rich land, which is to build a new mine or farm and pay two less to do so. So I'll build a new mine. Uh, I will pay two food to turn a population into a worker and then I will pay two resources to turn that worker into a mine. That's your four. Right? That's four actions. Boom. Done. Done. Now at the end of my turn I will earn my culture points. Oops. Oh I don't have any tunnels no, yet. You don't have any. Okay. No. So Mark's already cheating. Yeah. I will cheat really <laughs> Corey was already trying my, as well. Yeah. I'll earn my science <laughs> point and Corey will adjust the card roll. Yes. Discarded event. Shift that down. I'll let you guys take care of that. So on my turn, for one action, I'll play Michelangelo. Uh, I will use another action to uh, pay the two ores to take my worker pool, build up a new mine. I will take another action, pay two food create a new worker. It's a pretty standard first turn move. <laughs> unless you get the right cards. Mark's actually got a pretty solid start on us. I've got one action remaining so let's see what I can grab. I think I will take that. Boom! Alright. That was my last You're action. You're producing and maintaining? I'm producing. And maintaining? And maintaining. Okay, producing. let's go. These move down and this will start round three where we introduce... Events. events. Development of <laughs> settlement. Each civilization increases its population for free. Okay. Each <laughs> government has a designation in the bottom right corner. It's a house with a, a little gray house with a number on it. Okay. The gray technologies represent urban buildings. The brown ones represent farming technology. Okay. Urban buildings have a limit to the number of buildings you can have in each one and that's limited by your government. You also have a hand limit equal to the number of your actions per turn. So at the start of Corey's turn, we advance the card row to find out that this will actually be our last round. Uh, if it would have happened on my turn, we still would have just finished up the round. But luckily enough, we each get one last turn. Yay. Yeah. Our event uh, allowed Corey to build a temple for free. We'll see how that goes. Um, let's do a, a cat. Uh, we'll, we'll, I have one point. Mark has five. Chris 14. has 14. He's looking good. At the end of the simple game, each civilization scores points for the following. Two culture points for e each level one technology it has in play. Yes, awesome. Two culture points for each point of strength it has. Two culture points for each happy face it has with no more than 16 culture points. One culture point for every science point it produces per round. And one culture point for every food and resource it produces per round. So we're gonna tally up those and uh, we'll see who wins. Oh. So we tally the points. Chris wins with the uh, 49 points, was it? I think 49. Yeah, 49. Whatever. Definitely not 50. No. Um, and then the rest doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Basically, we, we brought you through the basics. Yeah. Um, and you kind of get a, the feel of how worker allocation works. And yeah, so I, I think the basic game 
is interesting. I don't think it's meant to be standalone. I no. think it's supposed to be introductory. Just get the mechanics down. I really want to know if and how you fight other players, if an army is worth making. Um, I, I, this game is very solitary. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, you, in the advance and fold, there has to be some way to go after the Michelangelos and, and the, the leaders or or your, your wonder that's just r raking in the points for you. Or if not, like you said, it's, I just, I played the game by myself and it's not, just racked up a pile of points. nothing worse than a runaway leader. Yeah, yeah. so. A smug but I, runaway leader is worse, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, wa I, I do want to try the advance and, and maybe one day the full. We'll see. Because, I mean, if, if this simple was that complex, introducing the uh, the happiness factors and the corruption and the governments and the military I don't know I I'm I'm worried that I won't like the advanced actually it just but. might be more wheels in the cog and just make it much more complicated to play solitary by yourself actually I, I'd love to hear uh, anybody who's who watches this if you've played the advanced or the full share your thoughts with us or if you've tried out the simple again let's hear what you guys have to say because i mean obviously you heard what uh we have to say yes leave a comment below um uh, also click the subscribe button really helps us out if you uh, enjoy watching our shows uh share the share them spread the word we really appreciate that as well and uh as always thanks for watching and see you next time